What does the relation I minus D equal to ID, proven using formulas 1.30 and 1.31, indicate or reveal? First, let's recall formulas 1.30 and 1.31 from the context of the question. 1.30 I2 equal to minus 1, 1.31 I3 equal to minus I now. Let's prove that I minus D equal to ID using these formulas. Starting with the left minus hand side LHS, we have I minus D now. Let's use formula 1.30 to replace I2, minus 1 minus D. Next, let's distribute the negative sign. Minus 1 minus D equal to minus 1 plus minus D now. Let's use the commutative property of addition to rearrange the terms. Minus 1 plus minus D equal to minus D plus minus 1 now. Let's use the associative property of addition to group the terms. Minus D plus minus 1 equal to minus D minus 1 now. Let's use formula 1.31 to replace I3. Minus D minus 1 equal to minus D minus 1 times I3 now. Let's use the distributive property to multiply minus D minus 1 by I3. Minus D minus 1 times I3 equal to minus D times I3 minus 1 times I3 now. Let's use formula 1.31 again to replace I3. Minus D times I3 minus 1 times I3 equal to minus D times minus I minus 1 times minus I now. Let's simplify the multiplication. Minus D times minus I minus 1 times minus I equal to D times I minus I. Finally, let's rearrange the terms using the commutative property of multiplication. D times I minus I equal to I times D minus I. So, we have shown that I minus D equal to I times D. This relation tells us that the order of multiplication does not matter when multiplying complex numbers. In other words, multiplying I by D is the same as multiplying D by I.